Hi guys, my name is Alessandro and welcome to my channel. So today I'm coming at you guys with a bare face because I just wanted to sit down and talk to you guys about makeup and I don't need to come on here with a full face to do that. I want to let my skin breathe so when I do want to do a full glam, my skin is looking flawless. So let's get into this video. Today I want to talk about Makeup that I copped but I should have dropped. Makeup that I just should have never purchased that I wish I could return but it's a little too late. This video idea is from one of my favorite content creators here on YouTube. Her name is Smokey Glow. Um, she'll probably be inspiring a lot of my videos because I just love her videos and I would like to make videos like that. So yeah, let's just get into it. Let's talk about some makeup that I just not worth money should have dropped i'm gonna start off with a product that i don't have on me because i gave to my boyfriend's sister um that is the benefit pore professional now the benefit pore professional is the first primer i got i got it back in the day when it was like popping and like you know when everyone was using the benefit pore professional there was a moment where everyone was using that primer i personally don't like that primer, I don't think I noticed it do anything. I actually feel like um, when I would put product like on my nose, like foundation on my nose, it would just kind of move around and it really wouldn't stick. The primer was nice for like a bare face when I just wanted to wear that primer and when I just wanted my skin to look more blurred. But for makeup, I just found that the makeup would move around and it would look patchy. So yeah. That is something that I actually ended up dropping and I just gave it away to my boyfriend's sister who actually likes it, so good for her. Um, next we're gonna have this Dior Hydro Life BB Cream in um, the color Golden Peach. It has SPF 30. The reason why this is such a drop is because it only comes in three, it's either two or three shades awful um who, who are two to three shades supposed to work for like no one no matter how thin or how like natural a product can be three shades is not going to work for literally anybody um this applies really beautifully the finish is really pretty however it barely lasts two hours in you are going to be looking like an oily mess and like I said, only three shades, and it kind of oxidizes as you get oily, so you'll end up looking very orange. So yeah, while I do love a lot of Dior complexion products, this is one that they really didn't put effort in. While I do like the idea of a natural BB cream with SPF, they really need to expand their shade range on this and maybe make it a bit less oily because, like I said, I look like an oily mess three hours in. Next we have this Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion in their original version. Um, this isn't a bad eyeshadow primer, however, it has literally like zero um, coverage to it. So if you have like any veins or if you have any like darkness around your eyes that you'd like to cover so your eyeshadow looks more smooth, it, this won't do the job. It will make your eyeshadow last longer. However, like I said, it has no coverage to it. Since it has no coverage to it, it won't make your eyeshadows pop. I actually really like the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion in the color Eden. That one does have a good amount of coverage. Not a lot where it looks hella cakey, but it does give you some coverage and really smooths out your eyes. Okay, and an eyeshadow palette that I regret buying is the Jeffree Star Morphe palette. Honestly, I regret like all my Morphe palettes that I bought. I don't use them at all anymore. I bought most of the Morphe palettes out when I first got into makeup. I just kind of bought all of them all at once because I just wanted the like variety of it, but then Two, three months later when I was like into makeup and eyeshadow, I really didn't use them anymore because I got better quality eyeshadow palettes that I like way more than the Morphe ones. But yeah, 
This Morphe Jeffree Star palette I regret in specific because now that I look at it, it has a lot of just very light neutral shades. Like all these shades right here, these right here are very similar. A good fourth of them are super similar. I think I was drawn to the shimmers, but the shimmers are quite basic. They're just like gold pink shimmers and that I now have in like a bunch of other palettes. So yeah, if you look at this eyeshadow palette, it's like literally not used like at all. But it's past the return date, so can't do anything about it. Next, we have Miss Nikita Dragon's Dragon Beauty. Um, I think this is called Skin Perfecting Potion. So this is supposed to be a color corrector that doesn't blend in with your concealer or foundation. It's supposed to be self-setting. That's what she claims, that it's not supposed to blend in with your products. It's just supposed to be like to cover um, any hyperpigmentation, any dark spots, and it's just supposed to be set completely covering it. And then you can have a blank canvas for your foundation. However, this does set a bit, like I definitely do see it go from like liquid to powder, but then as it goes to powder, it does look a little bit cakey. And then when you add foundation or concealer, it blends in with your foundation and concealer. Like your foundation and concealer will look way more orange in the spots that um, you apply this and then you'll just end up having to blend it all in together. I use this a bit. I would go in with like a very bright concealer to kind of like even it out and that would work for me. But like I said, since it would go from liquid to powder, it would get a little cakey and I would find myself having to like kind of take off on the spots where it would like build up. So yeah, I don't find myself using this like at all. Now when I want to color correct, I'll go in with a very peachy um, color corrector that's just like a shade or two darker than my skin tone. And I find that that works best for me than going in with something so orange. <sighs> Next we have our Beauty Guru favorite shape tape. I do not like this concealer at all. I don't know why this is like a cult favorite because it just does not look nice on your skin. It It's a little bit too drying, too cakey, and I don't understand how people can do such a heavy bake with this concealer because it's already so drying. I personally prefer my concealers to be a more natural finish, not necessarily dewy because I want it to not crease a lot, so I prefer more of a natural, soft finish. And I really don't go in with a lot of powder to set my under eyes because I just find that I still crease, I'll still get cakey, and it really changes the finish of the concealer. I've personally found a really good concealer. My favorite is the Cover FX, and I find that it really doesn't require like little to no powder to set. Next we have this Urban Decay Velvetizer. This is supposed to be a like mix-in. You can mix it into your foundation to add more coverage and to make it a, more matte. Or you could use it as like a setting powder. This powder is so finely milled that when you put it like under your eyes, it gives the most flawless finish, most airbrush finished. However, if you put too much, you will get a white cast. And no matter how much you put on, if you take pictures, like you will have bad flashback. So I never reach for this because if I ever take a picture, I'm gonna have bad flashback. And if I use too much, you're gonna see a white cast. So yeah, that's why I definitely never use this. Next we have Benefits Hula Bronzer, another cult favorite. I personally find that this bronzer is a little bit too orange. It's not really all that. Um, the packaging is way too small. I like a bigger packaging for my bronzers so I can go in with like my fluffy brush and like really be able to go in with it. This is like way too small to do that. And I personally never use the brush it comes with. 
Next we have this Cover FX um, Blush Duo in the color Sweet Mulberry, which is this purple color right here. Now, these are my favorite blushes ever. So don't think because I'm including this in this video that I don't like them. I just don't personally like the color and the reason why I got this purple color is because I don't have a purple blush and I thought for when I would do like purple looks, it would look really pretty on my skin to like, you know, have a monochromatic look. However, when I do purple looks, I tend to just use like pink blushes, not purple ones, and the purple blush kind of makes me look a little dead. This blush was definitely made for deeper skin tones, so it really doesn't work with my skin tone. This color is just not it for me. Okay, moving on to highlight. This is the Artist Couture highlight in the color Illuminati. The color is not the problem. The color is actually really pretty. I just am not that much of a fan of loose highlighters. This is a bit shimmery for my liking. I personally like highlights that could be blinding, but look very glow from within. And this one, you could definitely see it just like sitting on your skin. So it's not how I like my highlights to look like. I like them to really just melt into my cheekbones and make it look like I said, a glow from within, like just healthy, juicy skin, not glittery, powdery highlight. It's not a bad highlight. I definitely know a lot of people love this highlight because it's very blinding, but I like more buildable highlights that just look more natural. Next, I have um, this Anastasia Brow Gel in the color Granite. The color is not the problem. The problem with this brow gel is the formula. It is way too thick. And when you take it out, a lot of product is on the brush. And I find that it kind of looks muddy in pictures. It doesn't look too bad in person, but in pictures, I'm like, why does this look muddy? Why do my eyebrows look a little bit like splotchy? And you really have to be careful when applying this brow gel because like I said, a lot of product comes out. Like, look at this. I don't know if this focus, but yeah, a lot of product comes out and I just don't find myself reaching for this because I have a couple other tinted brow gels that I really like and work for me and I don't have to struggle that much. And that also, like I said, looks good in pictures. Doesn't look muddy. Okay, next we have this Tatcha Dewy Skin Mist. Um, back in the day, people were using this as a setting spray. And oof, let me tell you, this looks so oily on your skin i would not use this as a setting spray i had a friend that she used this like she bought this and she used it as a setting spray for the first time and she had to redo her makeup because of how oily she looked and i don't know why i got this because i'm like pretty oily so i don't go in with like a oily dewy setting spray so the way like so i really didn't find a use for this this is not even a setting spray, actually. This is like a, just a skin um, nourishing spray. So I don't know why everyone on Instagram and YouTube back in like 2016 was using it as a setting spray. I use this differently. I got use out of this by applying this on my cheekbones to give myself like a glow and to make my highlight pop. I like doing that, but sometimes um, since it's so like oily and like dewy, it would break apart my makeup immediately when applying it. Like when I would spray it onto the beauty blender and apply it, it would just break apart the makeup. And that would like get me so mad because it was literally like the last step. And after that, like my makeup would be ruined and I have to go in and like fix it. So yeah, I def this is pretty much almost done, but I won't be repurchasing it at all. And I kind of regret purchasing it because this was pretty expensive. This was like, I think, 40 to 50 dollars for no reason and also the bottle ugh, it's the worst after like one or two sprays it kind of like gets stuck it also doesn't do like a fine mist so if you spray it it's gonna leave like dots on your skin and they'll be noticeable because this is so oily 
So yeah, just I don't recommend this. Maybe I recommend this as like a skincare thing, but not for makeup. I would not include this in my makeup routine ever. Okay, so now I have this Becca Glow Gloss in Champagne Pop. They basically just took their Champagne Pop highlighter, which is like iconic and amazing, and put into a gloss. I had high hopes for this. I'm like, oh my god, a Champagne Pop gloss? This is gonna look so bomb. When this gloss, first of all, the smell when applying it, ugh, disgusting, disgusting, I hate it. It, good thing, it like goes away in like five minutes, but initially I'm like, is this bad? And I know this is not bad because I literally got it like two months ago. This isn't like even a popping gloss. I thought since this was gonna be, since this was like champagne pop, it was gonna be popping when it's actually basically like almost just a nude gloss that wears off like in 30 minutes this is the like worst long lasting gloss ever i literally put this gloss on probably 30 minutes before filming just to be like okay is this really that bad and you probably can't even see it right now it's all right initially it looks like a cute nude gloss but with the bad smell, the fact that it doesn't last more than 30 minutes, I would not purchase this again. So, last but not least, we have your girl Lily Lashes. I don't know how these lashes are so popular because they are so hard to put on. The um, lash band is thick, like very thick. and when they're brand new, they're super hard to put on. Even when they're not new, they're still hard to put on. They're too thick for my liking. And yeah, for like 20 something, $30 lashes, these are not worth it. I'm actually quite a fan of the Lily lashes. The one that come like in the white cases, I think they're like their like wedding collection or something, or their like light collection. But those, the lash bands are really thin and they're more wispy lashes. These are like IG baddie full glam lashes. The ones in the white case, they're very pretty and they actually look quite bomb. But the regular black case lashes, they're not it for me. I don't like them. So yeah, that concludes today's video. I had fun sitting down and just chit chatting about makeup that just wasn't it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.